So as creative people and as artists, we often struggle with what to paint and what to draw. And I know for myself that's definitely true. And especially since I'm doing my current sketchbook challenge and choosing to do that daily, um, I have struggled, even though I have been able to do it thus far. And I mentioned last week that I often collect photos. I have a random selection of photos that I keep in a separate folder on my computer as possible photos to draw. So that's one thing that I do. But last week I forgot to really expand upon that much further than that. Although you might have gotten a clue from my sketchbooks that I've shown thus far, um, the images that I've been doing the past few weeks, um, you will see that I often will do just random still lifes or I will pick up a book, a reference book that I have and do a quick master study, not a full on long master study as an exact copy, just a very condensed short term quick turnaround, one to two hours at the most for my journal. Um, but other things I have done is just pull out random pieces of fruit from the refrigerator. One day I actually purchased some fruit when I was at the grocery store with the intent in mind to actually draw or paint it and use it as a, a reference for the day. Um, but I will say even last night I, I struggled quite a bit and I wasn't sure what I was going to draw to the last minute. I spent an hour looking through reference materials and I was like, oh, I've come to the point where now it's a struggle. So and that's when I just randomly pulled something out of the fridge that I had in there. And you're going to see that today. So those are just some a few ideas that I have right off of the top of my head. Of course, another thing you could do is just take your book and go out into the field and just do something either from your car or take a hike. Just take a very simple sketchbook and sketch something on the trail. It could be something very simple. It could be a leaf. It could be a, a branch. It could be a flower. It could be all sorts of things. And if for some reason you're not capable of walking on a trail, you can even just do something from the comfort of your car, which I've even done that myself because here in Florida it's very hot and humid. It's summer now, obviously, and it's extremely hot, so I have not been able to get out on the trail. My time here is very limited to get on the trail, so like today, for example, we're having a lot of rain and storms, so that's why my curtains aren't open and they're just shooting with a closed up sort of studio at this point. But today I'm going to be sharing with you my progress on the sketchbook for the past week. Another comment that I got recently was that they were interested in my Neo colors that I had given myself as a reward last week. So if you stay till the end, I'm gonna be doing a quick swatching of that just so you can see what they look like quickly. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> I also wanted to take a quick second to show you some of the books that I have been using. So this is my John Singer Sargent watercolors book that I've done a few uh, quick master studies from. And this is the book on Emile Friant, which is probably a lesser known artist, but there are so many really beautiful paintings in here. Just like, for example, the back of that book is a, a, so amazing even the front. It's filled with tons of amazing paintings in here. And I just found out about him randomly and thought his work was so beautiful. Another um, artist that I have a small book on is the Paxtons. Um, this I actually had to order from their museum. But one of the entries I did in my journal today um, was from this particular book. So for the remainder of the sketchbook art challenge, I'll be completely in these books. Um, I don't know if I'll get a full 90 day out of this. I don't think I will, but I'll be using the next book. But I've decided after last week to just stay within this book because I think it meets my needs the most for the way that I like to paint and draw. And again, this is the Strathmore 5x7, I believe is the right size of this. And so the 
first thing I did on the 31st day was, and this is when I went to the grocery store and I just decided to pick up some beets. Um, luckily I like beets, so <laughs> you may not, but I think they're also beautiful to draw. And um, so I just laid it out on my table and did a still life study of the beets. And I'll show you up close again um, what I did. So then the next day, I actually, this was the Paxton book um, that I decided to do. William Paxton. And uh, I'm okay about it. I had some problems because one tricky thing with gouache is that it starts to lift the more you touch it. Um, regular gouache, not acrylic gouache. And so her face became a struggle. And it didn't turn out as good, but it's not bad. I feel like all in all, I was fairly happy with it. Then, so that was on the second. And then on the third, this was from the John Singer Sargent watercolor um, book that I chose to do. Um, this is a famous watercolor of a campsite, but I was, at first I was a little hesitant because I didn't know if I could pull off the illusion of light. But I think what really helped was the fact that these trees in the background were so dark that once you had all the light variations towards the front, it really kind of created a 3D depth and uh, an effect of the illusion of light. So I ended up fairly happy about it. Again, it's not an exact copy, it's just a simulated copy. Actually, let me show you what it looks like really quick. Hold on. This is what the original looked like, or looks like. Well, as far as my book's interpretation of it, of course, because colors are not exact when it comes to books uh, being reproducing, when it comes to books reproducing uh, artwork. But that's what the original basically looks like. And then that was my version. So, but I, all in all, I was fairly happy with that. And this was from the book um, on the Paxtons. This is what I used as a copy um, to try to try to reproduce again quickly. Not a master copy, a quick representation of this image. And I did this like within an hour and a half, two hours at the max. But just so you see what the originals look like. But again, it's not supposed to be an exact copy, so. Then, I actually chose to do another John Singer Sargent uh, watercolor. And it's because I really loved the colors of, of this particular watercolor. And I loved all the shadows in here. And it's funny because sometimes before you actually sit down and try to reproduce something, you don't see as much as you think you see. Like it took me a while to actually realize these were reflections of trees right off the bat when I first looked at it. But again, I'll show you what that looks like. Hold on. And this is what the original looks like. That I used. Well, what's nice about this particular book, which I think it, that you can still find this book on Amazon, which again, it's The Watercolors of John Singer Sargent. Although I've had it for a while, it's a great book. It's just packed with his watercolors. And he is, if you know anything about John Singer Sargent, he is a master American artist. Um, he was mostly known for his portraits. He painted a lot of wealthy people. That's how he made his living. But he was amazing at portraits and, well, at everything, pretty much. And he, aside from Andrew Wyeth, he's probably one of my very fav favorite artists that ever lived. So this is a great book, though. And I think, again, like if you just wanted to play with watercolors, um, this is a great book to find quick references. But that's what I chose to do. And again, that's what it looks like. So, anyways, <laughs> and then, then I chose, let me just make sure, let's see, that was the fourth, I think, 
Yes. This is what I did next, which is really simple. I had a reference photo. To be honest with you, this was another day I actually struggled in my journal because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to draw and I wasn't feeling great. I just felt exhausted, tired, and you know, after working all day, it's hard to do this on top of that, but that's what we're doing for 90 days. That's the dedication that we're, I'm trying to put into it. So, and you have to keep me accountable. Um, and I wasn't too happy about it. It's okay. It's just a study of some historic homes in South Carolina that I had pictures of. I mostly was drawn in by these trees. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I, I do love trees and again then the next day which was the sixth I did these trees I had a photograph um, in my collection of photos on my computer that I decided well let me just take a shot at it it actually was a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be again all of these are watercolor and gouache mixtures um, most of this was watercolor and then for the yellow that I wanted to pop in here with these, I think they're it was elm leaves uh, at the height of fall where they're starting to fall off the tree freshly. Um, the light was coming through and some looked orange and some looked brighter, but I used them to, uh, I used gouache to put them on their solid without having interrupt the watercolor. And especially in these places where there's dark bark behind it, that's what I did there. And then this was what I did last night, which was Friday night. Um, this was the night I was really struggling the most because I wanted to do something. Um, and I looked through my books and I looked through my reference photos and I couldn't find anything that I wanted to do. So I just went to the refrigerator. I actually went through the pantry as well. And I had an onion and a pear. And at first I thought, well, let me just do one. But then I'm like, oh, let me give a shot at doing both. And that's what I did. I call this the unlikely pear because a, it's a pear and it's a pair of, it's a onion and a, I don't know if both are considered a fruit. I don't know if it's an onion, it's a fruit. But anyways, that's what I ended up doing. And I'm fairly happy with it. Although right here I kind of messed up because I was trying to turn this shape away from the light um, if you know anything about values, um, everything starts off at the lightest point, and as it turns away from the light, it gets darker. And I'm, I'm going to try to explain that a little more fuller later on in a future video, but I was trying to get it to turn away so it creates a 3D effect, a roundness effect, uh, using light and shadows and half tones. Um, but right here I struggled. And then it lifted, it lifted up and I couldn't get the darkness back in there anymore because the paper had just become so saturated and I lost it. So I'm gonna have to go back in there and fix that little spot. But the onion I was fairly pleased with considering that it's watercolor and gouache. It, I think it turned out fairly well. So, and then I did use a little touch of gouache right here to um, to add uh, the highlights here and here. But mostly this is all watercolor. I used a little bit of gouache there and then I took um, my colored pencils just to um, accent a little bit of the darkness in a few spots and accent a couple of little lines in that paper texture that onions have. And yeah, so that's what I did. So that was this past week. And today's Saturday, so that's all I have for this week. But now we will take a quick look at doing a, a, a swatch of the Caran d'Ache um, Neo Color to Aquarella um, Wax Pastels. Okay, this is my Paul Rubens sketchbook uh, landscaped format. And I initially got this because another creator recommended it. And, um, and to be honest with you, I'm not in love with the sketchbook. It's pretty if you like the color pink. Um, I did take it out in the field and I tried to use it to paint with, let's see if I can get this thing open. Oh, it was just a sample. And, um, just 
did some random stuff. It really soaks everything up. So I kind of found it hard to control. And this one I did for my car. Just a guy fishing on the river. But I thought, well, let's, since I don't love this that much, let's use this for swatching. And um, I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna do a full on color chart or anything of this. I'm just gonna swatch a few colors and just show you what they perform like. Um, let's see, let's start off with one of my favorite colors. Let's do this blue here. Shift things around so you're centered and you can see. All right. So I'm gonna do a stretch and I'm gonna make it a little lighter as I go. And let's see, let's pick another color that's similar. And like this one here. Okay, let's just test them. So they're they are wax pastels, but they activate with water. Get my paper towel ready here. So I can control my water. And uh, it looks nice, pretty. That looks really, really pretty. I'm drawn in by these colors anyways. Oh, look at that, that teal. Oh, wow, that's so pretty. I will say, like, you can see where the, the marks are made still sometimes. That might be the downside of these. I'm not sure, but that one blended really well. Beautiful. I wonder if you used um, extra water. Okay. Pretty. <laughs> oh, that's funny. This one's blooming right here. This is called a bloom. Where when I added the extra water, it, it's doing a little line here. And you could just touch that up like that. And that's true with watercolors too. That's typical, something you would see in watercolors. I also have watercolor pencils and um, I could swatch those sometime in the future as well. So, let me see what else. Let's do some of these. Okay. Oh, that's pretty too. Oh, I like that color a lot. How pretty. Those are really vivid, aren't they? Wow. You can see those lines are still there. I think this paper, because it's more textured like watercolor paper, it's easier to blend those sparks out too than it would be on my Strathmore paper. But man, that is really, really colorful and vivid. 
I don't know if even the camera can capture just how vivid that is, but it is really vivid. Okay, let's um let's complement the book itself and try some pink ones or the red pink range. Let's start off with this pink one here. Okay. And do I want to go red or peach? Ah, does it matter? No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, that one, and then I'm going to do red. All right. That's still got some blue in there from my brush. So you clean your brush really well in between. That's what I'm doing right now. And then you can wipe it on your folded up brush, I mean folded up uh, paper towel. And get it clean. And things are starting to merge a little bit because I used a lot of water here and I think I put these too close together, but ooh, that's really pretty. What a pretty magenta. What's that one called? That one's called, well, it says purple. That's not what I would call purple, but that looks more like a magenta or something to me. And this one here is carmine. That's that one. This one. I've already got paint on me. Be careful with your paint, guys. I'll tell you, I see a lot of people sticking their fingers right into paint. Your skin is, um, it's porous and it's a part of your body and you can pull in te te chemicals, toxins from your skin and uh, make yourself sick. Especially there's some materials that are very toxic and you have to be really careful. Um, of course, every company that makes art materials has details on how toxic they are. I just think it's really good practice to wash your hands and keep your hands clean as much as possible. Of course, you can't help getting your hands in paint sometimes, but I've seen people where they full on, they're like rubbing oil and stuff, and oils are especially got a lot of toxic stuff, toxic uh, chemicals in it, and I, I just don't think it's good practice. These are the, the gloves I use. They're just extra large plastic gloves. And I tend to reuse them. They're large so that my hands are big anyways. So that, um, sorry, I look like I'm struggling like crazy. Oh, and look, I've torn this one. Um, and you can tear them. I think I tore this purposely for some reason. I can't remember what it was. But these are nice and big so that my hands don't get sweaty. Because I really hate being uncomfortable and having sweaty hands when I'm trying to paint. But if you're really using a lot of paint, like oils especially, um, it's nice to keep your hands safe and um, you know make sure that you don't get sick from all those toxins. So that was, anyways, just my two cents of that. And let's see, what else should we do? Oh, let's do some greens. I think I want to do this. And this one here. These are really pretty. If you love these a lot, you know, I, I mean, I would still suggest getting a smaller set like this one. Oops, got the pink in there again. Let me pick that up. If you really love these though, um, I would still get a small set to try. Like this one, I think is a good set. I personally think it's not too small, it's just right. It's enough to play with. But if you really love them moving forward, you know, maybe you'd want to invest in the larger set. 
these are really pretty. Like the like okra green. Those are really nice. These are almost very similar. Hmm. Interesting. All right. And let's move over to the other side here and do a few more. And then we'll be done. What shall we do? Maybe do, let's do the yellows and peaches. I'm not going to do every one, but most of them are actually going to be done here. So once I get done, there's that one. Scooby's complaining. This is like a peach. And an orange one. This clean from last time. All right. They are really pretty, aren't they? I got the regular. That's the one thing I want to tell you. Make sure that you're careful to get the Neo Color to Aquarella, Aquarella, because if you want these, these ones that activate with water, because I accidentally a while back had my eye on these and I got I got what I thought was these and it was the regular wax pastels and I was not as happy this is this is this is really beautiful I love these these are really pretty all right and let's see I want to do some browns I keep saying I'm not going to do them all but let's say I think at the end of I finish this these two pages it probably will be <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try and speed this up so it's not quite a long super long video because it's already starting to feel like it might be This one. That's the. It's called Sanguine. Sanguine. Those are really pretty together. Sometimes I think the camera doesn't show things as good as it looks in person. So they're really quite lovely. I'm just going to do some of these gray ones here. There's a there's a cool gray, a warm gray, and a very cold gray. No, it's umber. Umber. It's just umber. Terra ombre. Hmm. Black, of course, and white. But this one's a cool gray. It says light gray. And this one is um, just gray. But it's a dark, a dark gray. Okay, so let's try that. Sorry if I'm slamming those down too hard on my table. Very soft for about it. No? This one's, is that umber color. Terra ombre. They got it in three different languages. I think one's French. I'm not sure. Umber. And I'm just going to do black. Because it's so close to that. And that's that. Oops, again. It's 
still have paint on my brush. Scooby is determined. Scooby's very particular. If you don't know, if you, this is your first video. Scooby's my bird, my cockatiel. He's a rescued bird, by the way, but I've had him for a very long time. Um, he was flying around independent, um, free. He had gotten free, and they could not. My friend could not find the owner, so I ended up inheriting him because I used to have a cockatiel when I was young. Um, it was a really sweet bird. His name was Starbuck, but not after Starbucks coffee, after Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. Yes, but the original Battlestar Galactica with Dark Benedict. If any of you are that old, so. Um, anyways, so that's what those look like. Um, but Scooby is named, um, cause Starbuck used to say Scooby Dooby Doo. He could say that. And so when I got him, I just named him Scooby. But he's particular, he's grumpy, sometimes sweet, sometimes not so sweet. But now it's technically his bedtime. And that's what he's telling me. <laughs> it's like seven o'clock almost. And he will tell you, okay, now it's time for me to go to bed. And he won't stop until I get up and go put him in bed. So I'm gonna have to do that here in a second. But that's what those look like. I don't think I can see it in the light. Those are really pretty, aren't they? So pretty. Yeah, I'm very pleased. I think this was the perfect size set for me too. Um, I will have to test them on an actual product though, moving forward. I'm still hesitant because I'm, <laughs> I get so easy into, this is what I like to do with my watercolor, my gouache, um, pencils, those types of things that I'm used to. But if nothing, if you just wanted to play and have something abstract, you could play with these, I feel, um, if you don't feel comfortable drawing or if you don't feel like drawing. Sometimes I don't feel like drawing. So I could just overlap some stuff. I do this just sometimes for fun, just overlap colors and blend them and see how they work. And let's see, like, I wonder if I took my wet, slightly damp. That's interesting. Hmm. There you go. Kind of fun. Interesting. Cool. Let's pick something else here. And again, like I said, these papers come off. I said that last week. The little papers come off. It shows you you can take them off and break these up if you choose to. Yeah, you could just make these into just an abstract. If you just wanted to get a journal, just to have something to be creative in, and you didn't feel like trying to draw, or you don't really want to draw, sometimes it's just fun to play with colors and play with art materials. So anyways, that's that. It's just some random play there. It looks now it looks like a just got a mess, but it's fine. It's just a test book, sketchbook, so. Alright, cool. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed that quick swatch. And um, but again, no pressure. I'm not sharing these materials to encourage you to spend money. That's not my thing. Um, but to find stuff that it's fun to have in your collection that you might use, that you might find some enjoyment out of. I think it's nice to have a few things and find out what your niche is and then stick with that. Or, or definitely like 
buy on a budget. You know, you could set aside money um, and buy things as you feel like you need them. Or put it on your wish list, um, put it on your Amazon wish list, and have your family buy them for your Christmas present. Even better, free. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this here. I'll see you next week. Bye. Annyeong.